you see a lot of agents get certified, but then their certification lasts because they haven't had a client on an active roster in three years or whatever the respective term is for that particular sport. Um, so for me, I decided to dive right in. And like I said before, there was not a way for me to get into the gentlemen's club. So I made my own way and started the ladies club. By listening to my guests share how they are discovering their best self, you will discover the best part of you. So thank you so much, Chelsea, for coming on Discover Your Best Self podcast. Chelsea is a sports agent, you guys, and I'm just so excited to introduce her today because she's going to tell us her story, where she's from, and how she even got into the sports industry. Um, I think that it's going to be an amazing story. So Chelsea, please tell us, number one, why did you decide to be on the podcast? Well, first, thank you for having me. Also, I am very excited to be able to sit down and talk to you. Um, I got to know you a little bit, so I'm even more excited to be here and doing this with you today and with all of you all that are tuning in and listening to us today. Um, so I, once I became a sports agent, I made a post and I put it on LinkedIn and it got about 3 million views, which I was- Oh my God. <laughs> I know it was crazy of all the places to go viral it would be LinkedIn, right? And believe it or not, there were a lot of different people and companies that have reached out and being reached out today for interviews, sit down, grab coffee, grab a drink, whatever it may be. And I had to really sit down and make the commitment very early on that I was not going to agree to be a part of any platform that I did not personally believe in that I did not think was positive, that, that, that did not support women, and that did not support black women and wow. black people. So I knew um, that when you reached out and I did the research, I knew that this would be the best fit for me to get started um, sharing my story. Oh, wow, thank you so uh, much. I didn't realize how many, well, I didn't realize that it had three, I mean, that's a lot. That's overwhelming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and that's how I found you was uh, LinkedIn, actually. Okay. <laughs> yes, I saw it on LinkedIn. I think it was an article. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have to talk to this lady. <laughs> I have to talk to her. So, yeah, most definitely. I, um, that definitely makes me feel validated. Um, and so I, I want to make sure that we use the best time here and um, sharing your story in a great light. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about who you are and where you're from. Okay, so I am born and raised in Durham, North Carolina. I am the proud daughter of Darren and Annie Townsend, who they still live in North Carolina. I recently relocated to Florida for work, my full-time job. I work in-house, so I am a general um, compliance manager for AAU, which is the Athletic Amateur Union. Okay. Um, okay. Before graduating and getting this job, I really just started out as a young girl that just went for it. Um, I was in sports at a very early age all my life. Um, my parents were just extremely supportive and pushing me to be academically compelled as well as athletically compelled. That led me to UNC Chapel Hill for undergrad and then to Elon University for law school. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't know life outside of school yet. I just graduated, um, I'm fresh out, and I really am just grinding. That's pretty much when I, if I had to describe my story or who I am as one, as a person in one word, I would just say a grinder, mm -hmm. I've been grinding. Wow, yeah, <laughs> definitely, I would have to agree. I mean, and you'll probably have to do a lot more even after this. Um, right. <laughs> but as far as like your influences around you, I don't know if you have mentors or people that, you know, helped you or guided you to this point, but who has been influencing your life or making an impact? Well, as cheesy as it may sound, it is very true. And, um, I say this with everything in me, the two people that have influenced me from day one are my parents. Right. Um, I believe that my parents are absolutely flawless. Um, they're able to handle and face challenges with so much grace. Um, and they are people who have seen me at my lowest, who have seen me at my highest. And it's really hard for me to pick outside influences because we can only ever see 
what they put out. Mm -hmm. You never know what really goes on behind the scenes. But to have my parents be so successful and see all the work that they put in behind the scenes, to me, just lets me know that if I want to be nearly as successful as them, they are the people that I need to follow. Um, my parents have always given me such great guidance, but more than anything, they just simply lead by example. Um, I am the only child, so I have a very tight connection with my parents, and they have influenced me personally, professionally, and as long as I have breath, I will contribute much, if not all, of my success to both of my parents, Darren and Andy. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I love that. Um, do you... Why did you decide to take this career path, although you knew the odds may have been not in your favor? So I always knew that I wanted to be a lawyer mm -hmm. and I always knew that I wanted to be involved with sports. And so once I came across how I could put those two together, which would be being a sports agent, I was like, OK, well, it's settled. That's what I'm going to be when I grow up. Um, and I've always been someone that's extremely determined. I like to move with the purpose. Um, and so I knew once I started the journey of just being a college student that this was the end goal. So every step that I took, everything that I've involved myself in has helped prepare me be where I am today. And there are a lot of things that I feel like I've done where the odds are stacked in my favor. I wake up and just being a black woman, the odds are stacked. Excuse me, are not stacked in my favor. So I am not new to being the underdog. I am not new to fighting my way through adversity. Mm -hmm. And for me, this was no different. I was not going to shy away from something that I've wanted to be forever just because, you know, the odds were not stacked in my favor. And they weren't then, but I hope that the work that I'm doing now can stack the odds in the favor of young women that are, you know, coming after me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So did you uh, play sports? I did. Okay. Growing up, I played pretty much every sport but softball. Okay. Um, when I, that was my mom's sport, which is so funny that <laughs> I did not play that. She was really great. Mama. Um, <laughs> when I was at UNC, I was on the rowing team. Um, and I also was a inter-institutional student. So I was dual enrolled at UNC and Duke where I was a dance major. Um, I did not stop playing sports until I went to law school because all of your hobbies, <laughs> when you go to law school, you don't have any free time. Mm -hmm. uh, so working out was the closest thing I was going to get to playing sports. And then now transitioning into the work world, the closest thing that I'm going to get to playing sports will be through my clients. Right, right. So do you believe that, you know, with you playing sports and also having this career track, you know, how do, how do you think that that helps you either overcome, you know, challenges? Do you believe that, you know, playing sports, you know, help kind of mold that? Absolutely. Um, people that have played sports or grew up around athletes, they just get it. Yeah. Um, there's a different dog inside of them. Mm -hmm. They know how to just go for it. Um, athletes know that when you look like you have no options, they know how to create options. Mm -hmm. They know what it's like to give 100% effort even when you really only have zero energy in the tank to give. Um, so my athletic background has helped me just mentally be there. Um, mm -hmm. My clientele are athletes, so it's important that we have a meeting of the minds and that, you know, we can understand each other on a level that's deeper than just, you know, surface because right. of the nature of this business. Mm -hmm. um, and then it helps me out personally, again, just being able to keep going when it feels like I just physically can't or just like when the circumstances may look like I cannot be athlete in me is what pulls me through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, um, how much of what you what you do is sales um uh, well i would probably say about 80 percent of what i do is sales. Mm -hmm. uh the other 20 percent um it's just relationship building and just being there for my guys and just being that mentor that guidance counselor whatever else they need but 80 percent is definitely sales and within context i want to describe what it means for sales in our business yes, and that please. is me selling myself again in context selling myself as the agent selling my services 
to these guys and their families that I ultimately want to trust, um, you know, and for them to trust me to allow me to represent them and be their agent. Um, and then once you get beyond that relationship point, that signing agree agreement point, you get to the selling of your actual player to these different 32 clubs. Um, and then it, even beyond that, it goes to selling your player to different brands for endorsement deals, marketing deals. So like I said, 80% of my job is sales. Mm -hmm. And I did not, I, I wasn't really aware of exactly how much sales would be involved uh, in this job. I actually used to say, oh, I would never work in sales. And look, <laughs> here I am in sales. <laughs> yes. I feel like a lot of people don't understand that, you know, no matter what it is that you do, you're continuously selling, you know, yourself. You know, like you said, in context, your people are buying you. You know, your your personal brand, what is that? And so for for you, a segue is like your your personal brand, how much of that is important to your clients? So, you know, you you're a young black woman, why why would someone want to have you as their representative? Why is that important for them, you know, to be represented by someone like you? Well, for starters, I am a woman and that alone is my superpower. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I am able to advocate, the way that I am able to care, all the things that a lot of people would describe as weaknesses are actually my strengths. So my passion my ability to nurture, my ability to play a lot of different roles and my ability, which is my favorite ability as a woman is when there is no way I know how to make it. Mm -hmm. uh, and any person would want to have a me on their team, if nothing more for the fact that I will always show up for work every single day and give you 110% of myself. Mm -hmm. um, accountability mm -hmm. is something that I also provide that I think that you hear a lot of agents, they start off, you know, early on in the sales pitch, making all these promises. And at the time, they probably really do mean that. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I have followed through on every goal that I said that I would. And for my clients, that would absolutely be no different. Um, history tells, the present tells. Um, one thing to know about me is that if I say that I'm going to do something, then you can consider it done. Awesome. Yeah, I awesome. love that. Okay. Um, do you consider yourself a, a businesswoman? I do, which is <laughs> also another title that I never really thought I'd have, but I'm going to add that to my bio. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, again, becoming an agent, uh, a lot of people do not understand how hard it is to get a job with an existing agency or with an agent that's already independent. Um, and so for me, tell us, I'm sorry, I just no right worries. there, just tell us like what briefly, what is that process like? I don't know. I didn't even think about that. So what it really boils down to is who, you know, okay. it has nothing to do with what, you know. Um, so I remember applying to just multiple internships, externships with different agencies. Some of them just flat out told me, no. Some of them just never responded. It was to the point where I was thinking about changing my name on my resume from Chelsea to like Christopher, because I thought at that point they were just really, you know, not even giving my resume a glance mm. because I was a woman. And it's funny because now full circle after that LinkedIn post went viral, you'd be surprised the amount of people that did not remember that they told me no straight up to my face or that they just didn't read my email at all. And through that process, a lot of prayer, a lot of guidance from my parents and my close friends, I actually ultimately decided to do my own thing. Um, I decided that I like my story enough to where I'm going to tell it and I'm going to sell it and not give, you know, anyone else the opportunity to do that because I worked for, I worked for this story. So I'm going to use it to my advantage and to my client's advantage. Mm -hmm. um, so the process between getting certification and getting a job looks like begging. It looks like a lot of begging, honestly, <laughs> just, just being transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to a point where you either make a decision on whether or not you are going to hold off and wait for an opportunity to come, or if you're going to dive right into the game and get started. You see a lot of agents get certified, but then their certification lasts 
because they haven't had a client on an active roster in three years or whatever the respective term is for that particular sport. Um, so for me, I decided to dive right in. And like I said before, there was not a way for me to get into the gentlemen's club. So I made my own way and started the ladies club. Well, there it is. You got to just create your own path. Um, And that's part of being that businesswoman, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. What do you so if you consider yourself a businesswoman now, you know, what do you feel like the struggles you face or you may encounter, you know, moving forward? Um, Unfortunately, we are just still at a place where sports in general are not associated and not extremely accepting of women. Mm-hmm. Um, they like the women to watch. They like the women to do the glamour roles. They even way more accepting of women being on broadcasting um, and being in positions where they're in front of the camera because women are beautiful, they're bold, but they're still not exactly okay and exactly accepting of women in the administrative roles and women that are sitting at the same tables as me. They're still not really accepting of that. So that's going to be first things first, is dealing with my colleagues who are, the field is 98% men. Mm -hmm. Um, Next is going to be, I am very young Mm -hmm. in this business. Mm -hmm. And if the woman card doesn't work, they're going to pull out the young and inexperienced card. And my counter to that is, you were all once new like me at some point and to never confuse new with um, not qualified. Right. Those are two very different things. And so that's usually how I go ahead and end that conversation. (laughs) Um, And those are going to be my number, like my top two struggles. And that's going to be on the business side with player personnel um, but it's also has been and will continue to be for a while a struggle with just the personal side of trying to get my clients. Um, I find myself, you know, explaining a lot to get over the being a woman and being a young new agent. Yeah, absolutely. Are you um, one of the things that I was curious about, you know, are creating boundaries. And so not even necessarily just with your clients, you know, because you're a beautiful woman, right? And so it's the, you're welcome. Yes. And so, you know, creating those boundaries, but then also with other, you know, people that may be in administrative roles or, you know, thinking that, you know, oh, you know, well, she's beautiful and, you know, maybe I can date her or whatever those those things might be because that's real life. Right. Hmm. Um, so for me, I thought about all these things before I even got started with the certification process. I'm thinking like, well, is this something I even want to deal with? You know, just on the lawyer side of things, dealing with it in the legal profession, I was like, what's well, only going to be amplified mm-hmm. on the sports side of things. And then I realized that the easiest, most consistent way to overcome this is to just be myself. Mm-hmm. Men, they know better. Like they, they, they just do. Um, sometimes they want to play naive, but they genuinely know better. Mm-hmm. I carry myself in a way that I will demand respect. You will respect me and I will respect you. Uh, we will not give each other any more or any less. Um, any slick comments that may come shut down on the very first one. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is you're never going to find me being rude. Um, but I will be assertive mm-hmm. and I will let you know politely one time, um, one time the charm, um, but also embrace my femininity. It's mm-hmm. not something that I'm afraid of, and it's not something that men who I work with should be afraid of. Um, it's something that I think that we should both actually be way more open and comfortable with mm-hmm. using and completely taking advantage of. But I know that is not going to be the first step. Um, <laughs> so that's just something that I hope to also accomplish throughout my career as an NFL agent. I love that you said that, though, you know, embracing your femininity, because I think a lot of times, you know, we may think that we have to be more masculine or whatever it is. It's like, no, I, you know, I'm going to be myself and, right. you know, this is who I am. But, you know, you also have to respect me in my role. So, right. um, yeah, I, I, I appreciate you saying that. Now, um, 
How do you collaborate with other women or men in your field? Do you work with them? You know, do you guys team up? How does that work? So considering that I am so new, I haven't had as many collaborating opportunities as I hope to have in the future. For now, I have been in communication with a few different agents, um, some that sat with me for the exam. So we kind of met there and networked um, to where we just talked to each other about the ins and out of what it's like to be a new agent. And we also vent to each other because the recruiting season is brutal. If you've ever talked to any agent in any sport, the recruiting season, which ha is currently taking place right now, has been brutal. So it's been a lot of venting, a lot of running ideas off of each other. Um, because right now we can at least trust each other enough because we, we are all at the same level. So right, right. We at least have that open um, environment and flexibility with each other right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. In the future, I hope to do more projects um, specifically with other female agents, but also pretty much just my colleagues in general. I think that that is something that's extremely important. Mm -hmm. And so I know that you mentioned, especially, you know, getting the internships and working for a company is heavily based on your relationships mm -hmm. and who you know. Um, so obviously building that clientele list, um, that's important. And right. so how do you continuously build those relationships um, to be long lasting relationships um, so that you can continue. I mean, because you have to work. This is how you eat. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's about consistency. Um, me and my friends often talk about how we transition from childhood friends to adulthood friends. And the level of work is just different. Uh, we all live in different states. So we are required to, you know, check in more often. Sometimes you have to pick up the phone, you know, and not just send a text message. Um, and for me, it has involved and required me to physically be there a lot. So I've done a lot of traveling over this recruiting season to where I have made sure that I've been at some of my prospects games. I have went to cookouts. I have met mom, dad. I've met Lime Brothers, Lime, <laughs> like just at anybody that you can think of. Um, it requires that commitment. Um, this is a process that you would hope would involve more than just your one prospect. So it requires you to not only build a relationship with them, but also build a relationship with the people that are important to them. Mm -hmm. And that has required a lot of physical presence as well as just a lot of communication um, and being there, just being available for them to reach out whenever they need to. And the hope is that you keep that same healthy you know, channel of communicating and it just never ends. You just, mm -hmm. you know, keep that relationship. How does it work? Um, you know, so say, um, and you may, you may have not gotten to this point yet. Right. But just something to think about, um, say a client is, you know, they're playing professional sports or you're representing them and then they no longer can play anymore. How can you keep that relationship, you know, or even translate that or transfer that into a referral or, you know, something else where it doesn't just feel like that you left that person. You know what I mean? I do. So that is actually something that I tell all of my guys. Our relationship will not end when football ends because as we all know, well, not everybody. Some people just refuse to accept that football will end one day. <laughs> right. But football will end one day. And I tell my guys that that relationship will not terminate then unless you choose to do so. Mm -hmm. You Once you accept me as your agent, I will be your agent for life. So when football is over, I will help you transition into whatever other profession it is that you may want to do, even if that is no more than waking up every day and being the best dad that you can be, being the best husband that you can be. But that also could mean you want to go back to school. That could mean you might want to become president of the United States one day. You have that type of agent in me, mm -hmm. and that is something that I look forward to because that will be – how I foster and keep relationships long past just our time together on the field. Right, right. right, right. Yeah, I really like that. That's good. Now, 
what what motivates you to keep going, especially when you have some of those tough days? I know you said you have your parents that are, you know, super involved in your life. Um, but what are some other things that, you know, it's just like, ah, I really don't feel like calling my mom or whatever, you know, how do you get, get through those, those days? Well, first, I always try to choose faith over fear mm. all the time. Um, because when I have absolutely nothing and absolutely no one, I will always have God, mm -hmm. um, and doesn't judge. So I can go to him and be like, Hey, you gave me all these blessings, but I don't want them. Take them back. <laughs> he'll listen. He'll let me be. And then he'll snap me back into reality and let me know, no, you were built for this. You were made for this. This is not a mistake. This is not my chance. And so that usually zoops me back up and, you know, gets me back on my feet. But <clears throat> Also, outside of doing that, I also just, I'm an end goal person. Um, so if I can see what the bigger picture is, if I start to feel fatigue or if I start to feel like maybe this just might not be it, might not be right, I look like physically, I have it printed out. I'm a vision board kind of girl. I like to see what it is that I told myself that I wanted because sometimes you just need that reminder you need to be able to go and look at that board and be like nope pull it together i saw this meme on instagram where i was like well are you gonna cry or are you gonna boss up and then and then i was like well both i'm gonna do both i'm gonna cry and i'm gonna get it out but then i'm gonna boss up so i'm gonna bounce back i always will bounce back mm -hmm. well <laughs> memes teach us a lot no <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the world we live in now. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. So I remember you mentioning, you know, right before, and it's so funny because it's almost like right when we're at that tipping point, um, you want to quit and you can't see what's in front of you. And so if you could have saw that you were going to have, you know, 3 million people hitting you up, you know, on LinkedIn, you know, you probably wouldn't have even had the thought to want to wanna quit. And right. so, you know, what was it in your mind that was like, you know, I, I, I want, I feel like quitting, you know what I mean? And, and all of us come to this, to this point, right? And it's like, is it worth it? Why am I doing this? I just spend all this money and get educated and all of these things. And just, I'm not, I don't know if I can, I can do it. So how do you, how do you get past that? Because you didn't know that that was going to happen. Right. Um, I feel like I just. Again, that goes back to just the athlete in me. You don't yeah. always know what's on the other side, but you trust the work that you've put in and you show up and you put out. Mm -hmm. um, there are things, I think it comes back from, sometimes you play really great games and you just don't win. And then sometimes you play really terrible games and you somehow end up winning. Mm -hmm. So, but you're gonna always lose the games that you don't play. That, that's what I remind myself. Mm -hmm. So I always tell myself, at least suit up, get ready, get ready to play and put yourself in the game. Let somebody else count you out. Don't count mm -hmm. yourself out. So when I talk to myself like that, that's when I let myself know that I just cannot stop. I can't mm -hmm. stop. And then I have a lot of friends that I met at different conferences that I know want to be in the sports world, women in particular that I know want to become agents. And I honestly think about them. I think about how what I'm doing now is making this a little bit easier for them. Mm -hmm. And that's something mm -hmm. else that drives me because I'm sure the women before me had it harder than me. I have it hard and I want to anything that I can do to open that door wider for the women that want to come after me mm -hmm. is something mm -hmm. that I am extremely driven by. And then I think about how much law school costs and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you got to keep going. <laughs> they have these student loans. Yeah, keep pushing, yeah. You get real sad. They look at the student loans like, woo, okay, over that. Next, we're back. We're right. back. <laughs> right, 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 right. But you know what? I believe that because you have that story and those impactful moments and because you've been through those, you know, trials and, you know, you've experienced those things, that's so translatable to your clients. And so, yeah. you know, you can, that that's for them, too. And, you know, that's another way for them to trust and feel like, oh, wow, you know, she's doing these things. And so I can definitely trust her to help me get to where I need to be as well. Because it's a lot. It yeah, is. I think that's great. Um, tell me what advice would you give someone who is wanting to break barriers, you know, or doing something different? 
like you? I would say commit. If there is something that you want to do, you have to commit, be all in. And when you are all in, all the extra stuff, all the outside stuff, it may matter for a moment. Mm. It may feel like something for a moment, but you will have your eyes so set on the prize that you will get over it. You will move on. And commitment comes with self-discipline. Self-discipline comes with passion. And those three things coupled together, you just can't lose. Mm -hmm. You literally cannot lose. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say find a mentor. Find somebody that you trust. Um, and I have tried to start to do that with women that I do know, um, women that have reached out to me. I don't have all the answers. I probably don't even have half the answers, mm -hmm. but I'm going to respond to you. I'm going to tell you what I know, because maybe by the time you get to this point, I'm already at a different point and we can just keep catching up mm -hmm. and I can just continue to be that person for you. And third, keep the faith, mm -hmm. keep the faith in God or whoever it is that you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, having your faith and keep your faith in that um, and have the faith in yourself, mm -hmm. have the faith and know the fact that you put in the work and that you deserve to be there and you deserve that seat at the table. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Or you gonna build your own table. <laughs> That's right. If there's not a chair for you, start a new table. Please. Yes. <laughs> So my last question that I ask all my guests is tell me what does it mean to discover your best self? I think that it starts with a lot of self reflection, um, really dig down. And I mean, literally sit down in the quiet, you know, dark, whatever makes you feel most at peace and most with yourself. Um, I did that. Um, and I figured out what it is that I want to be, what it is that I want to be doing, where I want to be doing it, and why. Once I found my why, um, I became this person. Mm -hmm. um, and I am the best version of me when I know exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, because I am a passion-driven person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I try to make sure that I'm giving my best in my personal life, my professional life, because I feel like if you're only, only going to give 50%, why show up? Right. You know, right. if you're only going to commit halfway, why start? Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to have to do it five, six, seven times, just because you didn't give it your all the first time, then you're wasting my time, their time, everybody's. Right. right. So discovering my best, best self looks a lot like knowing myself, mm -hmm. trusting myself, believing in myself, and then performing. Wow, that was really great. I love that. What else? Is there anything else you want to add um, to this or to your story or any other last thoughts? Um, not really. I just <laughs> want to say thank you again for having me. This will be my first official time sharing my story. Ooh. So I'm really excited. This is the moment that we will always share. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you for trusting me to do this. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm just really excited. Um, I'm really excited also about your content in general. I'm really excited to see all the things that you will accomplish and how we can just continue to help each other throughout both of our professions. I'm really oh, excited. yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. And one thing I do want to add is... I would love to have you in person at some point in time. I know okay. this was good, but <laughs> we will plan to do that some kind of way. You'll have to okay. either be in Houston or I'll be in North Carolina somewhere where, okay. um, you know, we can definitely do this in person because there's something different about the energy when you are there together. And so okay. I would love to have a part two, um, you know, plan for the future sometime and we can talk about that. Yeah. Yes, let's do it. I'm down. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Thank you so much again. I appreciate it. I will be in contact with you. Um, this was great. Um, so thank you all for tuning in to Discover Your Best Self. I appreciate it. Again, this is Chelsea Townsend. And do you have any handles that you want to tell everyone to, you know, follow you or connect with you? Yes, so let's see. What is my Instagram? <laughs> okay, so my Instagram is... Um, hold that thought. Let's see real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually get it. Okay, I got it. Okay. My Instagram handle is ctown9 underscore. 
There we and go. Then my second Instagram, because I have one business and the other one's like business, but just follow them both because I don't know which one I'm going to use yet, um, is Agent C Town. Gotcha. And we'll go ahead and put that in the links for you as well. So thank you again, guys, for tuning in for Discover Your Best Self. Um, you know, this is a great, great story about someone who's just been pursuing their dreams, ready to go. And so I can't wait to hear all the comments um, from this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Discover Your Best Self. Don't forget to subscribe and comment. Follow us on Instagram at Discover Your Best Self.